I've been using these Epo Grip Epoxies for some time now, and I've been waiting for a project that would let me show you just how well they work. Aside from being really strong, these epoxies have the consistency of a petroleum jelly, and that means they don't run or sag. Unless you put way too much on. I made a professional air on landing with this airplane and ripped the retracts out of it, and we need to put this back together, and this is a good place to show you the Epo Grip Epoxies. The folks at EpoGrip tell us to mix this epoxy by folding it over on itself and just kind of gushing it together. And that really is pretty simple and you get it mixed a lot faster. After you do this a couple of times it really is easy and fast. And you can color this stuff using chalk dust that you just scrape off of a stick of chalk. You can tell that it's all mixed when you get a consistent color like this. I love the consistency of these epoxies because it lets you spread it like peanut butter on the joint. EpoGrip sent me this artist's palette knife and believe me you want to get one because it works great for spreading this epoxy. Because this stuff doesn't run or anything we can be fairly generous with how much we put on to be sure we get good coverage. But you still can't get carried away. And I'll spread a coat on all the contact areas of the piece that we're putting back in here. Here again, the consistency of this epoxy and the palette knife make it really easy to apply and have it stay where you want it. After I spread epoxy on all of the contact areas, I can put the piece back in place. Like any joint, if you want it to be strong, it has to fit very well. And I took my time fixing this piece so it clicked back into place the way it's supposed to. We can't count on any adhesive to make a strong joint if we have it bridging unnecessary gaps. Then I applied a little bit of clamping pressure just to hold the piece in place and we'll let this sit overnight. But I have another side to do because I did rip both sides out. While getting the other piece ready to get put back in, I ran out of epoxy and had to mix up some more. I'm using the paste version. It has a setup time like over three hours. So I just mix up a little more. There's no panic to beat the setup time. I just mix up a little more and go ahead and finish the joint. There's no rush. Then I can install the other piece and not be worried about losing any glue strength. After the part is placed the way you want it, the pallet knife comes in handy for removing excess glue that may squeeze out. But with a high stress application like this, I'm going to use that extra glue for something. The tip of the pallet knife works great for making a little fillet along the joint line. That lets me add a little reinforcement to the joint without adding a lot of weight. And because the Epo Grip epoxy doesn't run, the fillet stays just like I left it while it's curing. And like I did with the other side, we'll add just a little bit of clamping pressure to hold the joint closed. To clean up the tools, I just spray a little alcohol on some paper towel and the epoxy wipes right off of the tools. I'm going to let this epoxy cure overnight before we finish the repair job. Then I've got to get this wing recovered and we'll take it out and see if it'll fly. There's a lot of stress placed on these landing gear blocks, so this is going to be a good test of how strong the EPO grip really is. Just taxiing these planes around and the takeoff put a lot of stress on the landing gear. Warbirds like this are notoriously difficult to land, so we can expect some extra shocks now and then on the landing gear. The only way to tell for sure if all repairs made with Epo Grip epoxies are really strong is to do a bunch of takeoffs, landings, and touch and goes. This plane weighs a touch over 18 pounds, and all of that weight is being put on these two long landing gear. It's the length of them that really makes it hard on the airplane and their mounting pads. A few hours after we made these videos, I took the plane up again, and that's when we found out just how strong the epoxy grip joints really were. And while we didn't get this incident on video, I think when you see the pictures of the damage, you'll realize that this was far from an easy landing. It actually took a full-on crash to break the gear out again, but that's where we saw just how good these joints are with Epo Grip epoxies. All of the joints made with the Epo Grip epoxies are intact. Everything broke around those repairs. The repairs themselves held up fine. I later cut this wing apart more so I could see all of the repair joints. And it's very clear that the Epo Grip epoxies are way tougher than the material around them.